Allez, 17 euros. Can adjust the volume. Right, left or right. Yeah. Morning, guys. Welcome to another edition of my morning show. Going to get started shortly. My guest today is Stanley Goodrich. And good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Great to have you here in the morning show this morning. Uh, I was hoping to have um, Teacher Jenny Wheatley this morning. She is unfortunately can't make it, so we're going to rebook that one uh, with her. Uh, she is, as, as many of you would know, Teacher Jenny Wheatley has written a number of books, and uh, we're going to be in a later show going through that. I also have Miss P, the Honorable Miss P, coming back shortly. Uh, we'll be talking, I'll be talking with her on that. Very excited about what I'm about to buy show indeed. Uh, but this morning I thought I would uh, say that uh, I couldn't get Teacher Jenny. Uh, I have a young man with me who is is very knowledgeable in in, in, in basic f fitness and staying healthy, um, not just for track athletes but for the average person um, on on the street. You know, the, you know, so the, 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 that's a person that wants to live and wants to be healthy and wants to live a normal life and wants to live a long life. And so we're going to be looking at some of the aspects this morning uh, of of that, and I'm hoping that you just stick around with us. And 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 you never know, you it might be something that you you didn't know or might might reinforce um, your thoughts. So um, I have with me this morning Stanley Goodridge. Of, uh, and those of you who don't know, uh, Stanley is actually a gold medalist at the Carifta Games. Uh, competing for Jamaica and of course just to get on the Jamaica team alone in itself because of the, the standard is, is, is certainly an achievement but to have um, got onto the team and won a medal um, shows at high level. He then went on to, uh, to have his own gym program, become a, a, a personal trainer and um, as they say the rest is history. So good morning Mr. Goodridge. Good morning, Paul. Very well, very well. lovely to have you here this this morning. So we're we're talking really, Stanley, about a uh, uh, basic fitness. And when one thinks of basic fitness, what are the the, the main criteria? So take it from the scratch. What is the first thing that one has to think about? Well, if if one wants to embark on a fitness program or a health program, the first thing you have to do is go to the doctor. And, and get a, a full checkup to see that everything's in working order. Yeah. Um, and then after that, no. Depending on depending on what you are drawn to, what you like, activities you like, then you have to move from there. Whether it's and this is just the initial stage now. Right. Whether it's walking or doing a sport or <clears throat> going to the gym, doing you know. What what consider aerobics, you know. But the most important thing is 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 to move, and and it it really quietly bothers me when I walk around in Tortola, and I see people who are more than likely in their sixties or seventies, who you can tell they already they are slowing down inappropriately. Because we have this collective idea that by a certain age we are supposed to behave a certain way. And that is totally wrong. And, and we, we, have, we have been duped into thinking that once you have retired, then you must behave like a retiree. And that's, again, totally incorrect. And that's a big part of the problem with people age. Because we are not, as a community, we are not aging well. Right. So I want to stick on that topic for a while because... Uh, uh, my large morning audience, uh, m m uh, many are retired or semi-retired or um, business owners who are maybe in their shop or in their office working and they have the radio on on the yeah. side. Um, so they'll be listening keenly. Uh, and so therefore, the word you used there was aging inappropriately. Yes. So let's, let's analyze that and then let's look at how we can age appropriately. But let's yeah. look at aging inappropriately first. What are some of the things that we do 
that makes us age inappropriately? Well, first and foremost, I'm of the, <clears throat> the firm belief that when it comes to one's well-being, 80%, 80% of the problem resides in your diet. <clears throat> you know, there is no question now that your diet is the most important factor. You cannot outrun a bad diet. <laughs> you know, you cannot outrun, out exercise, out walk, out think. You cannot do it. It really comes down to diet, how you eat. So we're going to analyze a bad diet now. Um, and obviously everybody knows we're not taking anything personally because there's nobody personal here. Let's analyze a bad diet. Well, like I've, like, like I've said on one of our previous talks, it's very, very simple. There are, there are two very simple destructive things. Yeah, I'm going to add a third one now, but two very simple destructive things that we consume every day. And we think they are with you. Unknowingly or unknowingly, it is industrial seed oils and sugar, refined sugar. Industrial seed oil is probably, well, it's a toss up between which one is worse. Would you add salt to that? Or that's, is that your well, well, that's been okay. a thing to salt. Yeah, yet. okay, yes. sorry, go ahead. But, but salt is added in the mix, but salt only applies to a small percent of the population. Mm. When it comes to the seed oils and the sugar, it applies to everybody. So seed oils, let's, let's look at seed oils first of all. What is Indust the industrial Industrialized seed, seed oils. Right. What, what Corn oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunfield oil, vegetable oil. Those things are toxic for the human body and should not be consumed at all. So um, I usually fry fish, uh, fry chicken, uh, all my different lovely seasoned food that I season overnight or sometimes season for days and then fry it. Um, what do I do? Don't fry it. <laughs> look, look. Paul, it's very simple. You, you, have to, you have to just sit down, look at your life, and make the decision how much do you value you. If you value you enough, then you make the appropriate choices. And it's simple. Would it be, okay, I'm thinking about those who just, I mean, it's something you've eaten all your life. Yeah. But how about if I say, I'm going to have, I'm only going to have my favorite fried fish once a month? That, has, that, 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 won't, that won't hurt you. It's, the problem is, it's a day-to-day -day grind of it all. Okay. It's a day-to-day, -day, and let me tell you, it is a day-to-day -day problem. And it accumulates over the years. It's a day-to-day -day problem. Once a week, I don't think once it will hurt you. Okay. But the problem is, Paul, you get up every day from in the morning, it starts. Right? It starts in the morning. You break fast, as right. they call it. Okay, let's break it down. So let's go to breakfast. Breakfast. Okay, what's the standard break breakfast here? Well, <laughs> You know, well, well, I think in different households it's, it's it it varies. Uh, or even on the street. So, so um, John, 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 Johnny Kate, uh, Johnny okay. Kate, stand there. Let me give an example. All right. In the morning, I was sorry for my life. She was mm -hmm. rushing over to the bakery and down mm -hmm. to, to catch the last John, Johnny Kate for her boss. Right. And I thought, boy, you know, when you look at a Johnny Kate, you know, as it's fried in bad oil, mm -hmm. and and more than likely that person is going to consume that alone. So what goes into your system is just pure unref unrefined carbohydrates, I mean refined carbohydrates and bad oil. If they knew how they're setting themselves up for the rest of the day for destruction, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, it tastes good. I get it. But you, at some point, you have to decide how much do you value you. So if I definitely want my Johnny cake because I've always liked it, I've always eaten it, um, and I want to have it for breakfast, can I have it maybe once or twice a week? And what should I eat it with? Because I've, I've decided that I'm, I'm just thinking of yeah. the general public. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I decided yeah. I'm, I know I'm not going to stop eating my Johnny cake. Yeah. So I I now have to reduce in order how often I can. In other words, I can't have one every single day, mm. right? I should only have it maybe once or twice a week, yeah. maximum. Yeah. 
or what should I be eating? Well, it have to be some salt fish, I guess. Salt fish. If needs be. You know, and yeah, but it needs to be some kind of compromise between the Johnny cake and something else. Right. It's some kind of a protein, I guess. Right. Like an unadulterated carbohydrate. Right. Um, what about eggs? Should yeah. I should I yeah. mention bacon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could. You know. Look, it again. What what we tend to do is wait until the gun is pointed at our heads mm. to make the dramatic decision. People have been smoking all their lives and they feel fine, and they go to the doctor. And that's the boy. I still look a spot on me long there, that looks suspicious, you know. So how fast I stop smoking. <laughs> you know? Right. Why wait until then? It it fascinates me, but again, everybody's different. I mean, you know. Yeah. So why wait until then? Right. And you know, you know the ill effects because the body is so resilient, Paul. And that's a part of the problem. The body does not do us any good in terms of its resilience. It is probably too resilient. It doesn't do us any justice. Yeah. It's too resilient. So it will buffer and buffer and protect us, but at some point, it will break. Right. Okay. So, so we've we've gone past the Johnny cakes. We've got to have it with with let's say um, a, a fish, a salt fish, or something like that because it, it just balances it. Uh, egg, uh, the the bacon. Obviously, I think I know where you're going to go with that. That's well, well, let me just let me just let me just clear up something. I'm not a big big fan of breakfast. I don't I don't believe in I don't I think the whole break, breakfast thing is a hoax. <laughs> Okay. So that's another, the whole breakfast thing is a hoax. I, I know it doesn't have to be shocked up, so that's our whole cultural. All right, so let, we're going to come to that in a minute. Yeah, Let's finish with the breakfast first of all. So, um, and I'm going to come back to that point. Um, what about oats, having some kind of porridge? Again, again, you see, you have to be mindful. It is in context to your level of activity. Right. Okay, the, uh, the, 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 the average person is getting up and going, leaving their home to go to work from 9 to 5. Mm -hmm. All right? So let's focus on the average person leaving their home, going to 9 to 5. Um, I'm leaving my house. I've woke up in the morning. I, I, I haven't eaten since the day before. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I'm assuming I need breakfast. Right. That's yeah. how you've been brainwashed and programmed right. to believe. Okay. So, so therefore... So if I don't need breakfast, it, it'll, it'll just produces any too far from the mic. If I if I don't need breakfast, right? How do I survive from eight in the morning until midday? <laughs> I can only I can only speak to people I've observed, and including myself, right? Who a lot of it is mental. Yeah, because mm. there is hunger and there is starvation. And what I will tell you on this talk is going to be controversial for most people because, again, we've been brainwashed to think certain things. Right. There is hunger and there is starvation. There is nothing wrong with feeling hungry. Starvation is a problem. Right. But the human body, for its own health, requires periods of hunger. So the human body requires periods of, of hunger, hunger to be healthy. Yes, not starvation. Right. But we have to reprogram our minds. Because right now, I have not eaten since 8 o'clock last night. Right? Right. And I will not eat until probably 12, 1 o'clock. And I feel hungry. Right. I had I'm a, not starving. I had a very good friend of mine. If, if he didn't have breakfast, he would get headaches. Yes, because that's how you've been, that's how you've been train, training your body to behave that way. So you have to retrain your body. And, a, and a, a good way around it is to, for some people, they have coffee or tea or that helps. Right. You know? But it's just a reworking of your whole rhythm. And it takes a while. It's, it's not a quick fix. It's a discipline, you know? But again, it comes down to how much do you value you. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so what I remember a doctor once saying to me that if I didn't eat a healthy breakfast and I was always eating heavy late at night. Yeah. That's how I was putting on weight. And I, was, I, I remember I got to a point where I was putting on a lot of weight and I couldn't mm. get the weight off. And he's saying it's because of the way that I eat. And, and the way that I was able, I, the way that he told me to reverse and the way that I did is by eating a healthy breakfast. Mm. Right? For instance, if I'm thinking of 
again, I'm drifting a bit here. I'm thinking about, for instance, school kids, children going to school. Um, they need a healthy breakfast. Some of them do. Right. Some of them don't. Right. It depends on the child. Right. Some, some of them don't like eating that early in the morning because it's out of their rhythm. Right. You know? You have to understand the history of breakfast. It all came back to Cal Kellogg's conflicts and Dr. Kellogg and his brother. That's the history of Western eating of breakfast. It's Dr. Kellogg and his brother. And that is, if you don't believe, check it for yourself. That's where the whole breakfast cereal thing came from. Right. And, and, and what did Dr. Kellogg say? Well, it's an interesting story. One was a marketing genius and one was a medical doctor who was into health. Mm -hmm. He developed the cornflakes. As he used, to, he used to have a sanatorium. He used to treat people with health massage and you know, therapeutic um, modalities. And, and <laughs> so he developed these cornflakes as a fiber enriching part of the thing, just for his patients. Mm -hmm. The brother said, you know, we can't sell this thing, you know, if we just add some sugar and some malt. And he said, no, we're not doing that. He was very strict. Mm -hmm. And they parted company. And the brother took the formula, the marketing genius now, took the formula, added sugar, added malt in it, and the rest is history. Right. Then we have yeah. Keller's conflict yeah. for breakfast. Yeah. You know, Tony the Tiger and yeah, and right. that and that has been the demise of people's health from back in the sixties and seventies. Because people are getting fat and fat and slim and slim. And the, this because of this it, it is all it goes right back to the refined carbohydrates we eat in the morning. Right. So therefore, we need to get away from the carbohydrates. Both. Yes. Well, well but refined no. carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates. Yes. All right. So then, what about lunch now? Lunch, lunch. You see, you mentioned. Let me, let me just grab something. Go ahead. What, what your doctor told you. <laughs> Go ahead. It is not. <laughs> look. Hope he's not listening. You know, let him listen <laughs> because it is not so much the when but the what too. Okay. Right. Yeah. Because. When you eat, when you eat, what do you eat? So it does not mean that you're going to tailor your diet and then eat a lot of nonsense. Right. It also has to be appropriate. For maybe you're, even you're eating what you're eating in the evening, you're eating the wrong kind of foods. Right. Which is really the problem. Mm. It is not so much the late eating, but the wrong kind of foods. Bro. Right. Yeah, and you, should, you, need, you need to probably go back and look at what you are eating. I remember. Yeah, precisely. <laughs> yeah. So you have to look at that. Yeah. Because even though you're going to eat a certain way. It is also what you eat. Right. It's what you eat. Right. So, so um, I, what, what I had learned over the years is that they say that it should go from um, heavy to light to lighter as you go through the day. That, that's, what, that's what most people have learned. Yeah. <sighs> okay. That, that can work to some extent. Right. Right? If it goes like heavy to light to lighter, right. But that doesn't apply to the average person. The average person is heavy, heavy, heavy. Right. And in between, so they're eating five times a day, because in the fitness industry, you are told eat small meals throughout the whole day to lose weight. That's total nonsense. Right. It does not work. It has not worked. Right. It has not worked. As I've been in the industry, I tell you, it does not work unless you're running marathons. Right. And who has that kind of time? You know, it do, it has not worked because if we look seriously look at the people you see exercising for, and the and the results they are getting from exercising, it's like one percent. That's just reality. Yes, they're moving and they're active, fine. But in terms of their goal is to lose fat. It's only about one 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 percent who are successful, really and truly. It's shocking. So. How, if I get back to lunch, how does one lose fat? You lose fat by, okay, okay. Let me tell you what I think, from my observation. 80% of the journey is diet, which means that you have to figure out a way what is best for you. Unfortunately, because there's so much confusion out there as to what to eat, it becomes very difficult, right? And it's going to take a while for people to figure out. I can tell you what I do, right. but that's just what I do. Correct. You so, know? so every person's diet is going to be a little different, you're uh, saying? 
a little but more similar than different. Mm. You know, we are more alike than we are. We are dissimilar okay. as humans. We are more alike than we think. Right? And but when it comes to food, people get very emotional about what they eat. So I don't really, you know, unless unless they have again come to the the edge of the cliff where the doctor says, listen, if you do not do this, you are going to die. Right. Right? Yeah. If you do not adjust your living, you are going to die. Right. That's when people wake up and So what what I wanna just for the just for the well again I'm talking to the general person now. Yeah. So I've already bypassed breakfast. So if you're gonna have breakfast, you, you wanna stay away from the, the, the trans fatty acids, the, the all all those mm -hmm. sort of things, right? For for lunch now, right? What should my focus be for lunch? And then I'm gonna come to you for obviously for dinner. But let's talk about lunch first. And then I'm gonna come back to favorite foods. Yeah. You see, again, unfortunately, okay. Let's just be realistic. Just, just, just stand up in road town and watch people pass you by. And, and you see your size and shapes. And you realize that some, something is clearly not working. Right? So when you say to me, what's for lunch? The very lunch that they're eating is a problem too. <laughs> right. You know? So, so what should we be eating for lunch? Well, again, let's try and stay away from anything cooked in the, the kind of bad all I'm telling you about. So, so, in, so in other words, you're saying that the same problem that, 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 that goes for, for the, um, the Johnny Cakes for breakfast. Yes, there's no difference. The same oil that they're, same cook, oil. they're cooking for lunch. Same oil. Right. So, there are, so in other words, there are certain places in town that, that do healthy foods. They do health yeah. foods. Yeah. What some people call Rasta foods to some extent. Yeah, but you know, there, there's a way around that if you just go to the supermarket and look, and you can pick and choose from that if you're sensible. Right. But if I'm working and I'm doing a regular job and I'm hustling around, I don't have the time to 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 cook every day for lunch. Yeah. yeah. So therefore, that's the reason why they're that there are so many restaurants around, right. and they're trying to cater, you know, to the, the the general public to what they think they're going to like. So they have a they have a, a menu. And yeah. there's some basic things that are always on the, yeah. on, the on the menu, fried chicken, baked chicken, uh, oxtail, yeah. you know these all these kind of basic things, uh, you know, and you know, and, and then they, they'll they'll throw a, a pack of vegetables in if you mm -hmm. want veg mm -hmm. veg vegetable what have you. So when I, when I go, for instance, let's say to Bobby's and I line up and I look at Bobby's, and I see this this whole array of foods, where should I be focusing? Because I know what my favorite food is, but my favorite food but, but more than likely that, is going to be oil. It's going to be yeah, oil so then you look, you look, you look at the line, you look at the lineup, and you stay away from the oils. That's all. So, so if they said that sweet sweet potato has boiled, have the sweet potato, have the ground provision, you know, have the vegetable has not, have that. There's fresh vegetable. They, they, they always sell it in the packs. Have that, you know. There's big. There's big whatever. Have that. So I think just focus on the big stuff. Yeah. Um, if you must. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and avoid the yeah. trans fatty acids. Yeah. And you know, when you, if, 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 if after that you feel hungry, have some tea, have some bush tea or something, you know, that will help. But again, it's just this idea that we have, we have attached hunger, hunger to poor, to poverty. You know, yeah. we have attached affluence to eating what you want to eat. So, well, I'm not earning so I can eat it. So, so but the, the, the affluent among us, if you look at history of ours, they're they unhealthy. You know, if you look right. at, in England, look at the kings and the queens, and it's all gout and all that, because, because of the rich food, you know, believe it or not, the poor people were healthier. Right. Because they're not and I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm not talking about the Queen of England. That's different. Yes. But, but, general, but generally okay. speaking. Yeah. And I was going to come to that, actually, because somebody like the Queen, right, and, 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 and the Duchess and all these people, they actually have individuals who look at it, what, what they eat and, have, and, 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 and pick and choose what they should and shouldn't eat. Well, no, not really. They um, cause I've I've researched the okay. royal family. So how did that work then? For them, they still have 
what they have. But you see, you see, look, in England, the royal family, for instance, mm -hmm. they have estates that they grow their own livestock, which is organic. Mm -hmm. They grow their own vegetables, organic. The queen only drinks a certain kind of water, right? Which is pure water. Right. So, so from the outset, there's an advantage there. Mm -hmm. right? They have the best health care, the best. So they have that advantage mm. of access. But we can have it too. If we just think, we can have it also. You All know? right. Okay, so quickly on to, um, let's see, we're looking at time. I'm going to have to take a break in a minute. Uh, talk about, let me do that. Let, let, me, let me take a, a break for calls for a pause. When we come up, we're going to talk about dinner, and then we're going to talk about favorite food. Stick and stay. I'm Paul on the board. It's a morning show. We'll be right back. All right, we can uh, we can look at dinner, and 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 then maybe try to plan, and we can probably come back. I'm thinking that idea that you brought up, which is I mean, to sell the concept of, well, I don't know how you would sell the concept, guys, of of a school kid not having breakfast. No, no, I'm not trying to sell that. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, it's just what they have. Yeah, yeah, but what it's they not, have. It's right. what they have in them. Yeah, correct. So we have to figure out now what we're going to give them. Right. What we're going to start them off. Right. Because in Jamaica, you get started off with, with liver and banana. And right. Now, you know, all of my children, for those of you on Facebook that are listening, yeah. um, I've always given them um, protein for breakfast. Yeah. So my, my, for instance, my 13-year-old son never had egg and bacon for breakfast until he was 11. I should give him his job egg and bacon one day. Yeah. And he and yeah, he only true, and he, he's only I mean, he's never had it for a whole week. Yeah. I gave it to him because he was he went by somebody's house or some whatever it was, and he said, "Oh, but they have egg and bacon. Why have I been having a liquid, which mm. is basically protein and stuff like that?" Mm. All my life, he grew up on that. And I said, "Okay, well, I didn't want him to feel left out, so I gave it to him once, and of course he he liked it. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah. But then I quickly just weaned him back onto what he's always had." The beauty of that whole thing is that when he has his protein, it lasts him until lunchtime, and he's very alert. There's a reason for that. Right. Yeah. There's, a, there's a brain chemical reason for that. Right. And, and, and it, it, the, the egg and bacon doesn't last as long, and he's hungrier by lunchtime. Mm. Well, that's it. That's it, because it should. It yeah. should last, because it's... You see, certain, certain foods we eat mm. provide... we, we got to go. Going back on live, guys. Yeah. Welcome back, folks. I am Paul on the ball, and I have with me this morning Mr. Stanley Goodrich. Gold medalist at the Crypto Games and a personal trainer in his own right. And um, very well read in, in general health. And I thought it'd be an, an, a nice um, break and idea to, to bring him in again this week, just to remind folks that um, we will be bringing back in. Um, all the, the, the speakers that I know you'd love to hear. Um, Miss P is due to come back on soon. Of course, Jenny Wheatley is due back. Um, I, I really can't wait to hear about her books. Uh, Teacher Jenny has written a number of books, and we're going to go through all of those. And of course, Miss P. Um, I also, um, I'm going to pick up um, one of my old teachers, Elroy Turnbull, who I'm, I'm hoping to have on here soon. And, and of course, um, there are a few others. I'm not going to do too much name calling at this point. Also, for those of you who are listening, um, the Paul and the Ball Morning Show um, is um, looking for sponsorship. So we'd love to have um, your support. It, um, it doesn't require a lot, but of course, your, your support. If, so if you're listening, you can call the radio station or you can call me personally, 547-3146. And um, just support the, the morning show. You know, um, we're, we're looking for, like I said, for extra sponsor, well, sponsorships are, you know, um, uh, uh, we need to. We need. We need more support. Put it, put it that way. All right. So, Stanley, back to you again here now. And um, we were on to, to dinner, to so we've had breakfast. We've stayed away from all this. The the, the fatty. The, you know, or too often having. Let's say, in other words, we're not doing five days of, of of having um. You know, fa fatty foods. Yeah. And, and, and lunchtime, we've stayed away from all the, the fried chicken and all the fried things that we like, and we train a bit more healthy. Okay, I'm home now. It's dinner time. 
what should or shouldn't, more importantly, what shouldn't I be eating at dinner? Basically, the same thing you should be eating at breakfast or at lunch. Yeah. But I mean, that's, 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 uh, so uh, be more specific. In other words, uh, uh, hey, okay, let me ask you a more specific question then. So um, should I be eating greens for dinner? Well, for people, that, when you go to a lot of doctors, they'll say, um, try to have a lighter dinner, have, um, you know, have a lot of greens, have, you know. Yeah, but you see, you have, you have to be, you have to be careful with that advice because, um, the, there, there's going to be the hunger challenge. And there are certain foods that provide satiety that makes you feel full. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't create hunger. If, if you eat a, a meal that is too high in carbohydrate, you'll get hungry very quickly. So there has to be some, some good fat in that meal, right? Some carbohydrates you can help you to sleep well. But it's very tricky because when you you see it's things very complex in a the body. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are chemical messages in the body that, that dictate whether you're hungry or you or you, or you feel full. If you don't satisfy that, you're gonna feel either hung, hungry or you're gonna feel full. Right. And what they realize is that certain kinds of food will pretty quickly satisfy the, the hunger pants. Like, you know, some kind of some kind of protein with ad adequate amount of healthy fats. You know? Mm -hmm. And that's why for instance when you, when you eat Chinese food and you realize with the with the with the, with the, with the, with the uh, imbalance of rice, white rice, you feel hunger very quick quickly short shortly thereafter. Because again it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't attract that 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 part of the, the brain that deals with, with satiety, that deals with, you know, starving off hunger, because that's what carbohydrates do. Right, so let's talk about rice then, because rice is 99% yeah. um, um, of West Indians yeah. eat rice on a yeah. regular basis, yeah. Yeah. right? Um, of course, rice is very high in sugar. Well, well, we use the word sugar, but you, because there's there are different kinds. There's well, fructose, sucrose. Fruit, yes, yes. So, yes. so, so, well, so but, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So you have to be careful. How, so how often handy. should I eat rice? How much rice should I eat? And when should I eat rice? If if you can, just have a little bit. If you must, have a little bit. In the so eat it maybe in the evening, half a cup. But why why not have more ground provision? You know. Because usually it's white rice, which has no nutrients in it. Right. Usually it's white rice. Right. That has no nutrients. Brown rice has 15 times more nutrients than white rice. So if I'm going to have rice, I should be having brown yes. rice and not white rice. Yeah. And yeah. is it healthy for me to have rice every single day? Some people, if you don't put rice in their plate, they actually get annoyed. But that's, that's, their, that's their habit. That's their habit. But, I mean, right. But I mean... But like I said, Paul, it comes down to you, the individual. Uh, not sugarcoating anything. It is your health, and how seriously you take your health is how seriously you apply what you need to apply. So, is eating rice five days a week healthy or unhealthy? It, it works for the Chinese. <laughs> right, they eat, you know, they eat rice for everything. Yeah, it works for the Chinese. But remember, now the Chinese, it's a rice. Is, rice is probably even not in the issue. So it, it's not really the rice; it's the proportion. How, how much rice you yeah, eat? Yeah, I know. So with the Chinese, they don't eat a lot of vegetables too. They don't. They do. They do eat a lot of And the vegetables is what balances the insulin spike from the rice. I got you. Because the big, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Paul, I want everybody to listen to me. At the end of the day, it is how you control insulin. Whatever you eat, whatever you do, it is how your body controls insulin. Insulin is attached to almost every human disease. And malady, insulin is a real problem. And how you manage insulin? Right. So if I'm managing my insulin, and I eat, uh, let's say, two spoonfuls of rice, yeah, I then need to have what? A lot of vegetables with that? Yeah, a lot of vegetables. 
to, to, to balance out the insulin. Precisely, because it reduces, and they've, they've proven this on, on dogs, right? Where if, if you give a dog, you, you know, the regular kibble that's on the street, and they study insulin level, it goes through the roof, and they are, they're now linking that to the, 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 the ill health of a lot of animals. So, wait, again, people might have lost you there. If you give the dog the kibble. The right? kibble, the regular, you know, the brand name. I won't call them brand names. So, so if, if you give dogs the brand name food. Yeah, the kibbles. It's called right. the kibble, dry okay. food. Right, dry food. It's, it, there, there's been an explosion of, of incidence of cancer, diabetes in dogs, heart right. disease in dogs because of the food. Right, just because they're giving them the yes. hard dry dog food yes. alone. Yeah. So the, the lifespan of your dog reduces yes. greatly if you're just feeding them yeah. dog food. And this is somebody who, who gave them the food, drew their blood, look at the insulin level, and started to make the link. When they added one cup of vegetable oil mm. to the food, the insulin was cut by half. But the dog is not going to eat vegetables, so what do you... No, no, the ones, yeah, he, he mixes it into the food. Mix it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But the point I'm making, mm. I think he missed my point. Yeah. Transfer that note to us as humans. I, know, I was just trying yeah, to just it, think it, of the it, pet. <laughs> it is even more applicable for us. Right, correct. Right? That that the eating of the vegetables reduces the insulin spike along with it because again it's white oils more than likely which is high in the glycemic index which spikes your insulin right is there any <laughs> other food off the top of your head that that will spike the insulin um, like rice yeah watermelon <laughs> watermelon yeah, yeah watermelon um Refined flour, mm. uh, anything refined, you know, juices, juices made from, even even if you have, even if you if you, if you put carrots in a juice and then it's still a problem. I'm not a big fan of juices either. Right. People so, are, you know. So what about the person that is always selling uh, local juices, uh, carrot uh, juice? This juice, I want, that I want, juice, I want, with all the sugar in it. I want one, 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 with, with the one too. To no, 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 we just hurt somebody's income. No, but I'm just telling you what not trying to the reality attack, of no. the situation. Wait, wait. Right? Can we talk about high insulin levels? So if yes. I'm every single day going to somebody who has a, a store or a van and they're yes. selling local juice, yes. I'm buying the local juice because I, I used to drink Coca Cola. Yeah. But I don't want to drink the Coca anymore. I want to drink local. I want to be healthier. So I'm buying the local juice. Mm. What Am I doing a good thing? Um, well, you might get a little more nutrients from the local juice, the vitamins, and you know. But but I'm still yeah, getting but, an insulin spike. Yes. So can I balance that out, or should I not be drinking drink, that every drink less day? Less juice. <laughs> and and so you're saying that I should just be having a bottle of water instead. Yeah. Water. So if I'm going to buy the local juice, I shouldn't be drinking it every single day. I should no. should be having it every single night. I mean, support the juice man, but just support him less. <laughs> right. I mean, we're talking about health here, so. Yeah. Um, the other question is, is there a way that I can make that juice so that it is healthier? Is it, what, what makes it unhealthy? Is it because it's just the carrot that naturally has natural too much sugar in yes. it? Yes, and because it is juice, it, 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 so it doesn't have its natural fibers in it. So it goes straight to your bloodstream. Um, so I'm not, a big, I'm, not a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of oils or juice. But one of the things the Americans have promoted for years is juicing. Yeah, but it's, it's, look. People promote what they need to promote because they need to do what they need to do to make the money. That's fine. Mm. But you have to look, you have to you examine things for yourself. Right. Right? So it's and a, figure out things for yourself. So it's good to know that you really shouldn't be juicing every single day. Unless the juice is celery juice that, that has no taste, you know? Right. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, but it really comes down now to what spikes your whatever it is for. The critical thing, what spikes your insulin. Right. So so if it's a drink that that, that is that is highly sugar concentrated. It's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. All right, got that. So that's important that we understand we understand that. Yeah. All right. So um now on to um so so again clarifying it, um the the so both breakfast, lunch and dinner really have to be less oil based. For me to be healthier, what about that's a start? That's a start, right? So, yeah. what, what what about um? First of all, I want to look at the the older folks. I have a mother who is in her eighties now. Mm. I mean, she's still very active, but I don't think the average eighty eight year old, which my mother is, 
plays tennis twice a week, which my mother still does, mm. right? She's very that's, why, that's why I just got 88. Yeah, she's, she's, she's a little played. abnormal. Yeah. But for the, the average person, let's say in the 80s and above, who, who isn't as active as my mom, um, how do they stay active and healthy? Well, Paul, <laughs> here's the next sad, sad reality. The average person who I know in the 80s mm. probably has dementia or some kind of Alzheimer's or who wouldn't even be listening to this program. <laughs> right. You know, right. unfortunately. Okay, so let's take it back a couple of years. Let's go back to 60. Yeah. How do they ensure okay. that when they get All right. to 80? Now we're talking. Yeah, right. Now we're 60. talking. Okay. But then you see, it becomes a problem because that particular 60-year-old started the problem from when they were 40. Right. I have a friend of mine who is 36. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, boss, here's the deal. You play football, you do what you need to do later. Fine, that's all well and good. But if you keep up that football playing, when you get to 60, you can't walk. Right. Right? So what do you mean? I said, because I've seen it over and over again. Because they mix up sports with just keeping fit. Right. You know, sports sport is for young people. Right. Sports is for the young. Sounds contradictory, but believe me. Reality. And I'm, yeah, it's just be very careful with, with, with sport. Yeah. It's for, it's for, and if you don't manage yourself properly, then you end up in problems. So no matter how much you love to play a particular sport, you have to be realistic. And I said to him, I said, you're now 36, you have four years to figure out your life. By the time you get to 40, you have to take a long, hard look at where you're going to go. So everybody who's listening to this program who is not yet 40 or thereabouts, listen to me very carefully. When you get to that age, take a piece of, take a piece of paper, draw a line with a Y in it. Mm. Right? You have to decide now at 40, what route are you going to take from here on in? As far as physical fitness is concerned. Your whole well-being. Right. Spiritually, psychologically, you choose. Right. You have to decide. And I've chosen 40 for a reason. Right. And that's when the decline really starts. Right. Yes? So for that person now, they have to become a lot more aware of what they're eating. Yes, it can't be business as usual. Right. Also, as well as for, for the listening audience, also, um, if they are somebody that has been actively playing in a sport um, at a competitive level, yeah. they're now going to need to reduce that. Well, this is where it tricky now, because remember now, they, they are so addicted to the sport. Correct. You know, and, and addiction is not necessarily good for you. Right. So not because you love it means it's good for you. Right. You know, I'm not saying then you're going, you're going to now become inactive. Just change activity. Right. You know? But I, I'm, I, I like playing football, or I like playing softball, or I like playing cricket, or I like yeah. playing basketball. And I've played in a league all yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and all I'm right. now 40. Yeah. All right. Uh, let me be very clear. Yeah. It also depends on the sport. Right. Uh, softball is less damaging than football. <laughs> right. And rugby. Right. Let's be very, very clear. Right. You know, to see in such some extent basketball, because basketball is very jarring on your body. Mm. And mm -hmm. most people do not put things in place to bolster themselves against the onslaught of those kinds of sports. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, and I keep saying this over and over, and I will always say this, that the, the most important, even outside of all of this part, I've said it to you before, mm -hmm. it is your muscle tissue integrity. If you do not maintain your muscle tissue, it's a rapid decline. Right, so again, for folks who've <laughs> never heard you talk about yes. before, um, I'm going to ask the obvious now. Yeah. So what do I do when I'm over 40 to ensure that I maintain my, my muscle integrity? Let's say if I've, I've been playing basketball for years and I now know I need to slow down. Yeah. So maybe you're I... You're not do. slowing down, you know. You're not, but, you see, you're not slowing down. Well, I'm not, you're not shifting. Correct. But okay, I know no, I'm shifting then. Yes. Because, for instance, I've been playing in the league. Yeah. Right? The league is aggressive. Yeah. Right? I'm thinking that maybe I shouldn't be playing in the league anymore. <sighs> well... The basketball league. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's going to be very hard for people. You know, they, you know, they are addicted. And it's, and it's all kind of about camaraderie. Should, should I be paying less hours in, in, in the league? Or, or what you need to do then is put things in place to, to reduce the risk of injury. Right. Like getting regular massages, ice bath after you play. And the most important thing, going to the gym and strength train. It right. is critical. I cannot say this enough times, Paul. People <laughs> go to the gym and strength train, build muscle. Muscle is life. Right. Okay. I, I, I don't, not only do I not, not want to go to the gym, but I have no time to go to the gym. What can I do at home that can simulate that, that, those same basic exercises? 
It's going to be very difficult. Well, I mean, the majority of people in, the, in society are, are just never going to make it. Yeah, well then, but you say again, and, and, and that's a big part of the problem. Look at the majority. Look at 80% of the people. Right. It's a problem. But I remember you were saying before, you get, maybe get some dumbbells at home. Yeah, you can do that, you know, yeah. and, and hopefully you get the right advice. And you, that's better than nothing. Correct. Uh, or you know? just have a little multi gym at home and you, you, you right, use it. Right, right. That can work. But that's the, that's the point I'm making. Yeah, that can <laughs> work if you can, you know. Because for the list of the audience, you know. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but that can work. Yeah. And some push ups and stuff. But, yeah. but, you know, if you really want to, ace this thing. Right. Ace it. Yeah. Then, you, and then you have to. So for the one who has the potential and the ability and the time, and to, the do time. That, to do that. And, I, and, I, and listen, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. That's another. That's another hoax, you know. That's another big hoax. What's that? I believe in the eighty twenty rule to everything in life. Okay. Most things. Sometimes even more like nine to ten. Right. When it comes to exercise, and I'm doing this thing all my life. I now realize that I can take twenty percent of my time and get the eighty percent of efficacy and gain. No. Right. I mean, always knew, but I just never did it, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to like convince people that listen, you can actually spend only twenty percent of the time exercising. Exercising, you get eighty percent of the gain. Right. <laughs> what we do traditionally now in most gyms, again, probably ninety-eight percent of people in the gyms now are spending eighty percent of the time to get the twenty percent gain. I see. You know, so so they're not being time time efficient. Right. So they're spending too much time at the gym. Yeah, essentially. Right. Essentially. But, but again, it's, it's, it's all addictive. And we brainwash to think it can't work in any way. And that is not true. Right. But for the rest of us who are listening, I want to make it clear yes. that, you know, the, the alternative to that is maybe buying a few dumbbells. Yeah. I mean, you may even have something at home that has a bit of yeah. weight in it, yeah. lifting it. And look, you know, that's another thing. Push we have all these hilly areas. Walk up a hill. Walk a hill. Okay. Walk a hill. It's, it's right. very good feeling. Right. You will get strong. Right. Walk a hill. It's, it's, there's always been this saying that walking up hills are bad for the knees. So what about that? No, so, no. Downhill is a problem. Walking downhill. Yeah. Whatever you do, you walk down the hill yes. and you don't run. I can walk, walk zigzag. To take the stress, you know, walk zigzag. Walk zigzag. Yeah, yeah. Walk backwards. But that, that's, that, that's not a problem. The problem is people run down the hill. Right. And that's where the sharing force is, is like on you the know, knees. Five times the body weight because you run down the hill. Right. So you walk down yeah. the hill. And when you're walking down the hill, walk and slightly bend your knees to, to reduce the shock. Right. So the key thing is taking this extra shock off, off of your back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, folks, you listen to Paul on the Ball. I am um, on the morning show and I have with me, you know, I, I, I've learned his, his, his knowledge in, in basic fitness has just totally, um, totally amazed me. And I thought it'd be so good just to get it out for you. Some of the things he, he says, as he, as he himself admits, does sound very controversial. But unfortunately in life, if we want to make changes in our life, it, 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 it at times has to be a little controversial. And we're yeah. talking about our health here. Yeah. And we've been looking generally, which is, um, for those of you who listen, which is one of the reasons why I have made the effort, and I will continue to do so, to bring in um, some of the wiser heads uh, of society so please do continue listening um uh, in in the mornings uh we're probably going to be moving across the tuesdays um, but i will let you know just so that for, for people to begin to understand understand about your territory understand about the country that you live in know the people know the places know the history know where we came from today we're just talking about you just staying alive and living long and i have stanley talking about that go ahead stanley yeah so so something just came to mind that <laughs> We can use this whole pandemic thing in a very positive way, now, in okay. a very positive way. That, that, and that should really get us in gear. And I'm glad you said that, yeah, because a lot of people have put on a lot of weight during yeah, the pandemic. Yeah. So how do we get it off? We, we, we can use this pandemic positively, that this should really get us in gear to start taking care of ourselves, to strengthen our immune system. Because at the end of the day, when all is said and done, it is your immune system that is going to protect you. Okay, immune system, I've got a question for you. Why is it that during this pandemic that there have been so few people catching colds? I've noticed hardly anybody yeah, yeah, has yeah, a cold. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what is, it? is it because we're well, wearing masks? What is the deal? A, it's a combination of things. 
you know, and to, to me, the biggest thing is, is the washing of your hands, which should be, to me, should be standard anyway. Mm. I think the biggest thing is washing of your hands. Yeah. Yeah. So the, therefore, when, and, when there's and, alcohol or soap, you, you, you should wash no, your hands. Yeah, but I think, I think fundamentally, the best thing is soap and water. I don't trust the hands. I don't trust, I don't stand it. I don't, I don't believe in it. Soap and water has been for this for centuries now. <laughs> soap and water has worked the best thing. Right. Right. And, and I, th I go back again, we should use this pandemic thing positively as a, as a win, a means to spur us on to really look at ourselves, start taking care of ourselves better. To me, you mean, when you say positive, you mean just our general awareness of ourselves and yeah. thinking about fitness and health. We yeah. should use the, we should use the, the pandemic just to positively. bring out positively yeah. you know, awareness. Yeah. Okay, got you. Yeah. All right. I mean, other thing like, like, you know, taking certain supplements, you know, looking at our vitamin D levels, which, which, by the way, most people in, in the BV are vitamin D deficient, <laughs> believe it or not. And, and vitamin D comes, uh, comes from the sun. The sun, essentially. But, 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 but we are still vitamin yeah. D deficient. And if you think about it, look, look at where we are now. We are in this cave. Right. Where? How many people spend, spend day, time in a cave every day? Right. So what, when he says cave, so the, the people who are listening. <laughs> modern day cave. So if many of you are spending um, full days in in places that are, that are, have AC that have um, yeah. Yeah, that have this be looking at taking more vitamin D yeah right. vitamin D three Vi vitamin D three yeah, about maybe four four thousand I use a day right um, I see any other vitamins vitamin C vitamin but, yeah D. but not as I remember this course already but not not ascorbic acid and right. like and like I said. The prettier pharmacy in town sells the right vitamin C. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, if you're going to buy a vitamin, just yeah. beware that you're, vitamin, you're buying the right vitamin, yeah, not yeah, one yeah. And, it, and it's at the bottom of the shelf. Right. <laughs> That's what I would say. Right. So, the, so the better vitamins are usually at the bottom yeah. of the shelf. Yeah, yeah. And uh, going, more. going and ask. Going and ask. You yeah. know. Not a salt acid. Not, not, do not buy a salt acid. It is only a part of the vitamin C complex. I'm tired of saying this. It, it is not, it, you need to buy the right vitamin C. Right. So vitamin C is important yes. in vitamin and, and, D. And only the, pretty, only, the pretty, only the pretty pharmacy sells it. Right. <laughs> only the pretty pharmacy. All right. So look for the pretty pharmacy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there might be one or two around. Yeah. Always <laughs> okay. <is> only one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> only one. <laughs> Uh, right. as so, as I saw the owner yesterday, I told her, she just laughed and she said, thank you. All right. <laughs> I hear you. Um, yeah. So, uh, just as we, you know, we only have a couple of minutes left now, so as we, as we wrap up, again, for those who have been listening, I've had Stanley Goodrich with, with me here. And let me just uh, really, really quickly, as I have a quick time, just to remind some folks that, uh, again, if we're talking about fitness, the, um, there's going to be a 5K run walk on on this coming saturday and uh, it starts at 5 30 um, this coming saturday uh queen elizabeth park it's a run you can run it or you can walk it it's 5k uh, sponsored by caribbean insurers so please um if you're looking at really just keeping fit fit standing be a good thing just to come and, and do that walk huh? and if you feel fit enough you can run it yeah but you know yeah. uh, again that's the sort of things that you want to be getting involved in also really quickly um, just to throw this in, on May 24th, there is going to be the Soapbox Derby, which is going to be held at the HLSCC. So for those of you who are interested, get your apps, your application forms in, get your, start to build your Soapbox, um, um, what do you call it, cart from now. Uh, you have another couple of weeks more to get that done. But this coming Saturday, of course, is going to be um, the, uh, the, 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 the 5K run walk it's 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 really just a walk uh you, but you are you can you can run it as well there's no there's there's nothing against you um taking part in running as well all right so stanley yes we're just going to just um break it down a bit the last minute so we have uh for the listening audience again um just 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 wrap it up with you know breakfast lunch dinner well Basic. basically if you can stay if you can stay away from 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 breakfast stay away from breakfast no, if you can, of course. Yeah, obviously, okay. again, for the listening yeah. audience, just to clarify, we're not saying that children should not. No, have not, not no, not children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Adults, yeah, adults, adults. adults. Children are different. Children are different. Okay. Yeah, let's just make that clear. Yeah, for children, are children, children are different. Children are different. Okay, good. So for the for the for the. It for just the, regarding the children, though, is what you feed them. What? Yeah. Stay away, stay away from. 
Yeah. Conflict. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you wanted to say conflict. I said, I said it for and you. The sugar pops and the sugar pops cereal. and those things. Yeah, and the juices yeah. and the cereal. Right. And the juices. So for yeah. the kids for breakfast, you don't want to be doing juices. Yeah. You don't want to be doing different kind of corn flakes kind of no. stuff. No. Give so, them some egg and sausage or something. Eggs and sausage, whatever. Or something give them some food, give them food, man. Give the children food. Give them food. So give them food. They can give them some chicken and rice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Whatever. Right. They can sustain them. Yeah. For for the day, cause they yeah. need. They yeah. they're growing. The Chinese, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese eat chicken and rice for breakfast. Chicken and rice for breakfast. Yeah. Leftover food from from the day before, you know. Right. And yeah. So the point I'm making is not serious. Right. It's not serious. <laughs> yeah. right. So and then and then lunch for the grown ups. Again, you know, I can tell you, it's theory from the oils. So you're from the oils. Theory from the oils, theory from the right. refined sugar. Right. And anything that is baked at a breakfast yeah. or lunch, you uh, want yeah. to minimize the amount oh, you yeah. eat. Just stay away from the oils. You shouldn't be having and a refined sugar. Yeah. And again, the dinner for the evenings, if you're going to have your greens and stuff like that, yeah. whatever you're eating has yeah. to be balanced. Yeah. Keep it light if you can. You know? And if you get hungry before you go to your bed, have some bush tea. Have bush tea. As in ginger, you name it, whatever right. you want. Right. Right. Just don't have anything with caffeine in it. Nothing with caffeine. No, that might be a problem. Yeah, or it may keep you up. Yeah, yeah. Right, but right. mint tea, ginger tea, right. lemongrass, you choose. Right. You know? Right. And, th and those are good things to have even at breakfast. Right. Yeah. It, 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 but you should, hey, that's another thing. Everybody, listen to me. The first thing you do as you wake up in the morning, you should have at least two cups of water. Right. On that note, um, you, there's my theme. Some kind of our time is out again. Thanks a lot, Stanny. Thanks all you for listening. Next week we're gonna have back uh, one, one, one of the, the the greats. I don't I won't tell you which one yet, but stick and stay until next week. I am pouring the ball. It's the morning show. Please do have an enjoyable rest of the week. God bless. I don't feel like this. Oh, it's standing. Yeah, you see, you know. Because of the okay, guys, thanks a lot. Appreciate you logging in with us. I am pulling the ball. Have a wonderful day. There you go, Stan. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs> Talk to you soon.